While the Fort Hood gunman shouted Allah Akbar as he opened fire, killing 13 people and wounding 30 others. But the administration refused to call it terror, labeling it workplace violence, blocking certain benefits to the victims there. But now they could soon be eligible to receive the Purple Heart. And that's no thanks, though, to the White House. Sergeant Alonzo Lonsford was shot seven times that day at Fort Hood. He joins us now. Good morning, Sergeant. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, good morning. You're welcome. What's your reaction to the fact that Congress is moving forward here, um, really awarding and presenting and honoring uh, you and victims with the Purple Heart when the president still has not yet done anything? Well, it's, it's a bit of mixed emotions. One is that I'm happy that we have reached this point. But there again, I'm sad that our own commander in chief has not acknowledged what has happened the correct way. And I'm trying to figure out a reason why he is he is dragging his feet. But the good thing about it is that with patience and due diligence, we have gotten to this point and it's been a long, long, painful process. Absolutely. I mean, you took seven bullets, nearly lost your life at the hands of someone yelling Allah Akbar. I, I don't think many people can imagine that. Would you define that scene that day as a battlefield? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it started from 9-11. And so the, the enemy has changed tactics. And when the enemy changes tactics, we have to change to combat that enemy. And it is not a thing about it being an embarrassing situation. What, what comes into play is that we are now fighting these battles on our own U.S. soil. A great point there. You know, in addition to just understanding and honor and really giving the, uh, the American people an understanding of what you all went through, um, there are benefits that come along with the Purple Heart. I mean, combat pay, increased VA health care benefits, tuition waivers and scholarships in some states are offered there. So not only have you been denied an honor and really recognition of, of what you went through, but truly benefits that <laughs> more than earned. So this, at least, when you're looking at that and the statistics there and what will be offered, that has to make you feel a little bit better that Congress, at least, is working on it. Well, absolutely. I mean, being as that at this point, I have a daughter that's graduating from high school this year, and I have another daughter that's in college. And so, therefore, you just can't do it off of retirement pay alone. You can't. And to have put your life on the lines for freedom and then to have the people that are in charge of our infrastructure, our government, to treat you the way that they're treating you, when a lot of them have never even worn a uniform, to just basically turn their back on you is mm -hmm. embarrassing. Sure. Can I ask you one quick question before we go, sir? Uh, yes. Hillary Clinton said that we need to empathize with the enemy. You saw the enemy that day, 2009. Do you empathize with the enemy? No, I don't empathize with the enemy at all. I have no tolerance for the enemy in my uh, mind I feel that we should eliminate the enemy because right now as we speak the enemy is still saying what they want to do to the survivors of the Fort Hood shooting they're still saying what they want to do to all US military personnel be it their guard reserve active component or retired so they're still trying to, co to continue to bring the fight to us right. but Sergeant. they're not going to win Sergeant, my sincere thanks for joining us this morning, your service, and we're glad that things are at least moving in the right direction for you. Strong words from you this morning, as always. Thank you. Are you welcome.